Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for dropping in. Um, some folks are calling in from cottages and sweet away places. So that's that feels nice. I feel mudita, the resonant joy of uh, seeing people with beautiful windows and trees and light behind them. It's uh, it's lovely to remember and feel how that affects us when we see beauty or joy or good things um, happening for each other. <clears throat> the practice tonight is one I've done a few talks on here uh, on this YouTube channel, uh, different flavors depending on different contexts. The the other ones I was looking back at what what when it's been about a year um, is the topic of forgiveness and and as these synchronicities happen often, then today, I think it was today, yes, it was, um, a tricycle posted a video, a short clip video of uh, Gina Sharp um, making a, a statement or an excerpt from a talk on where she was saying about forgiveness. She says, forgiveness or any spiritual practice accumulates over time. Um, and as with any spiritual practice, if we do a little bit and then we leave it for a while and then we do a little bit and leave it for a while, that it doesn't have the same effect. It's not going to have the same uh, accumulation and development and cultivation and growth and uh, effect on our heart mind. Um, she likened it to building a muscle, going to the gym. If we went to the gym once a month and hit the weights, we'd be sore and not, and we wouldn't be developing strength. Um, versus, of course, if if we do anything consistently, we see the effects of that. We see the development, the cultivation of that. Um, and so we are revisiting uh, this this one again, as as all of the our spiritual practices need to be uh, continuously cultivated, consistently, I would say, consistently, so that we feel that uh, growth and accumulation of uh, skillfulness and onward leading development of our awareness. <clears throat> and uh, it it feels a little tricky for me to be offering forgiveness practice in this kind of online format. It feels like a very tender territory to me uh, that I would normally prefer to offer forgiveness practice on retreat or with one-on-one -on -one with somebody and really setting a whole container for that because it's a uh, yeah, tender, tender place and not easy. Uh, that being said, I th it's still very, very important and worthwhile and we'll just be going tenderly into it, gingerly stepping into it, hopefully. Um, of course, uh, I it, it it seems like a thing to say, of course, for but but um, mm, we still forget <laughs> that we can't control other people's behavior. I keep trying. <laughs> I keep trying. <laughs> it's so absurd. Um, and so. Um, the forgiveness practice is, isn't so much related. It's related to other people. It's in relationship with other people, but it's not really about uh, forgiving someone else. It, it doesn't mean that we approve of harmful behaviors or um, let me, I just going to make sure that this is muted. <clears throat> So we don't get any pop-ups here. 
All right, should be okay. Um, yes, so it's really about, I can feel in myself the places where mm, there's some exception <laughs> to the rule. There's a lack of equanimity. There's a lack of mm, full compassion for all beings when there's some being that I haven't forgiven. So there's, it affects me. I feel in myself, uh, most of you, and this little, this part is still, you know, I'm still holding something. And, and that holding is keeping me from full equanimity or freedom. Uh, and so really this practice is about cultivating the intention to release the places of fear or shame, resentment, anger in my own heart mind in relation to other beings and in relation to myself. hope that makes sense. Um, and so really, th this is a practice, as, I, as Gina Sharp was reminding us, th that it needs to be cultivated over a period of time. It's not like you just do it once and you're, you're good to go. <laughs> we have to keep inquiring, keep working on it, keep feeling into our intention and why we want to do this practice. <clears throat> to really see how much of my own physical energy, mental energy, emotional energy is being sapped or held captive really from really being available and responsive and free, uh, free of suffering. So to see, you know, it may seem subtle, like, you know, you've just kind of put that person or that aspect of yourself in a little box tucked into the corner. But that requires energy to um, keep that protected and walled off or to keep fortifying it. Like, yes, but, yes, but they are, <laughs> or I am. Now, sometimes harm is, often harm is to such an extent that um, we can't even, it's too intense to even touch into the these intentions of offering forgiveness. And so we can adapt it if something feels really triggered um, to just cultivate the intention, I intend to forgive someday. <laughs> There's different ways of wording that, but it's just like, I'm not feeling fully able to offer forgiveness right now. And I have the intention to forgive you someday or to forgive myself someday. And then we have to keep working. it. We have to keep practicing and, um, perhaps working with therapist or counseling or all the other ways of self-healing, but certainly this as a practice I've found very transformative. Hmm. It, forgiveness also doesn't mean that we don't need to take wise effort to protect and care for ourselves. I'm um, I'm a fan of boundaries myself. I think they're good and healthy and skillful. Um, I don't know, maybe someday, maybe a fully awakened being doesn't have boundaries. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm thinking of stories of the Buddha and like, you know, where he's clearly just saying no and um, with compassion and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm a fan of boundaries. Uh, 
This is another little quote that came across my desk this week from Prentice Hemphill. And I, I wrote it down, but I didn't have time to look up who this person is. Sorry, Prentice, I apologize. Um, this came in a newsletter for death doulas. And it said, boundaries are the distance at which I can love you and me simultaneously. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Wow. Love that. Boundaries are the distance at which I can love you and me simultaneously. That, uh, yeah, Th there's just a lot in there. That might need to be a whole other talk. <laughs> I've done talks on boundaries already, but maybe another one. Okay, so this is meaning to say that the forgiveness practice doesn't mean, yeah, come on in, it's all good. You can just, you know, we uh, sometimes it's very skillful and wise to protect and care for myself as well as others. All right. Mm -hmm. There's traditionally three aspects of a forgiveness practice. Yeah. Um, so one of them is all of the beings in the phrase, we'll use that terms, all of the beings. But if that feels overwhelming and you're like, oh, all of the beings I've heard, Lord, um, it's you don't need to draw up the list or do the big moral inventory in this practice. That is a helpful practice, but um, and that often happens spontaneously as we develop a meditation practice. Uh, so remembering all the beings I have hurt. And so some might just naturally come into awareness when that phrase arises. And it can also just be kind of a felt field of like, oh, I know I've caused harm. Absolutely. And for all the beings that I have harmed, and we continue with the phrases, which I'll say more as we go. Um, so you don't have to search out anyone specific. You don't have to call up particular people. Just see what comes up or keep it open. Um, and the next category is all the times I have hurt and harmed myself. Neglected, abandoned, um, negated, belittled, all these different many ways that we um, harm ourselves. We'll be offering forgiveness or moving towards forgiving ourselves. And then the last one is remembering all the times that I have felt hurt. So the first is those I have harmed and then how I've harmed myself. And lastly, though the times I have felt hurt or harmed by others. Remember, if the if there's trauma experiences or very, very um, extreme harms, or even just something recent that feels really charged, it does not mean forgiveness doesn't mean that you approve of the harmful actions. It means that you have the intention to free your own heart and mind from that walled off place. Okay. I think that's enough intro. Um, oh yeah, one of my favorite quotes, do I have it? Lily Tomlin. I think said something like forgiveness means letting go of all hope of a different past. The past has already happened. And I think I'm getting the words wrong and that's going to bother me. So I'm going to look, <laughs> see if I can find it real fast. Forgiveness means 
I know I have it here because I was reading it earlier. It's one of my favorites. Come to me, Lily. I met Lily Tomlin. She's so wonderful. I might not be able to find it quickly, but it's you get the gist of it. <laughs> Let it, it means, yeah, letting go of all, because we we hold on to these things because we're like don't want it to have been the way it was, and it it was the way it was. We can't change that. Um, and so, what? Where are we keeping our hearts contained from? releasing that for ourselves. Let's see if I can find that quote later. All right. And there's a, a poem from Rosemary Watola Tromer that I'll read as we settle into the practice, or maybe I'll end with it. I'll read it now, and then I'll probably put it into the practice as well. It's called Three Slow Moving Wondrous Things. Great poem title, Three Slow-Moving Wondrous Things. She says, the heart of the blue whale is in no hurry. Only four to eight beats per minute. And the glaciers move their brilliant blue mass less than 300 meters a year and forgiveness. It can move even slower than that. It may be months, even years before it blooms. But how wondrous when at last we recognize that perhaps through no effort of our own, it has released its unhurried perfume into our thought. Oh, sweetness we thought might never arrive. Oh, surprise when it touches us everywhere. That is sweet. I, I love that she's naming that forgiveness can be slow, slower than the icebergs, the glaciers, slower than the blue whale's heart, months or even years many years before it blooms. Perfect poem from Rosemary Watola Tromer. Okay, so let us prepare for practice. As, um, as you may have heard me say before, this is like a Brahma Vihara practice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Someone on our Zoom call here has um, gotten those words correctly for me from Lily Tomlin so I'll share them with you forgiveness means giving up all hope for a better past thanks so much Lily Tomlin forgiveness means giving up all hope for a better past love that hmm that's hard that's hard but so freeing uh so as you have heard me say before with Brahma Vihar practices or heart abode practices, um, it's important to really be gentle with your being right now. So for this practice, you might like to lay down, you might like to dim your lights, uh, you might like to place a, a, a nice weight on your belly like a, a pillow or a hand at your heart at any time. So take a moment now just to adjust your surroundings or your posture and really uh, be as kind to yourself as you can as you set up, letting go of any distractions that are around you. Mm -hmm. So we begin just by meeting ourselves in this moment, 
See if you need any movement or touch or sighing breaths, any adjustments to your posture. And we begin just by resting the body in the present moment. Just from bringing up this topic, there may already be some activation or tension, worry. So we're just going to take several minutes here just to see if there's tension in the face that could release. Wide forehead, resting eyes, easeful jaw. And then feeling into the area of the neck and throat. Letting go of any tension that's not needed right now. As the sides of the neck lengthen, the shoulders might rest downward. Not by pulling them down, just by the muscles lengthening a little bit and the weight of the shoulders dropping. The weight of the shoulder bones dropping all the way down through elbows into relaxed hands. And then as you feel into the area of the heart center, whenever it's helpful to you, you could place a hand there. And just feeling into what may feel tender or courageous in approaching this practice. And then when you're ready, we can do the same with the belly center. Softening to whatever degree is available. And then we may begin to feel more weightedness through the hips, legs, and feet. If you're laying down, the back body being supported by the earth. If at any time this practice feels overwhelming, you could return to this sensation of the body being held by the earth, or certainly just open your eyes and look out a window if you have one, look around your space, just take a break whenever you need to. The forgiveness bhavana practice is an intention to release the places of fear or shame or blame or holding in the heart so that the heart can heal and open. And I'm going to offer some phrases and please use whatever words feel appropriate or accessible for you at this time.
Let's just rest here with the body or breath for a few more moments of just connecting with ourselves and our intention. No, very gently remembering or in an open way, not needing to be specific, an awareness that, that I have caused harm, all the beings that I have hurt, harmed, abandoned not cared for or turned away from. Let's see what comes up. Could be just an open felt awareness that I have caused harm or some may come into awareness. And seeing that when we have caused harm, these can turn into shame or blame. And these are not skillful qualities. And so we cultivate now, repeating silently or changing these words, for any way I have caused harm, hurt, neglect, unkindness, or pain to you, knowingly or unknowingly, in thought, word, or deed. Because of fear, anger, or confusion, I ask forgiveness. For any way I have caused harm, knowingly or unknowingly, I ask forgiveness. Remembering if you feel overwhelmed or caught in stories about this, you just touch into the intention and then return to feeling the ground or opening your eyes. Touch and go, touch and go. You don't have to stay with it.
We'll take a few more breaths with this. The beings that I have harmed, I ask forgiveness. And then gently release that part of the practice. Release your breath. Reconnect with the body, ground. See if there's any tensions that need some space or ease. And now we'll begin to move towards the second aspect of the practice. Recalling now all the times I have hurt or harmed myself. Neglected or turned away from myself. Abandoned, belittled judged or be or was unkind to myself. Allow feeling into that. And feeling into these ways that I have hurt or harmed myself. Now we cultivate the intention for any way I have caused harm, hurt, neglect, unkindness, or pain to myself, whether knowingly or unknowingly, in my thoughts, my words, my actions. through my own confusions, fear, or anger, I offer forgiveness to myself as much as possible in this moment. I forgive myself. For the ways I've abandoned, doubted, belittled, or judged myself, I offer forgiveness. I forgive myself. And if that doesn't feel possible at this time, Perhaps some phrasing like, I intend to forgive myself someday. And continue practicing.
Change the wording as you need to whatever feels appropriate for you at this time. I forgive myself. And then taking a deeper breath and releasing that part of the practice. Reconnect with feeling your hands, your feet, your breath. Whatever other sensations help you connect directly to present moment. Let go of the story. Feel the body. Perhaps a deeper or sighing breath is helpful. And then as you're ready, you could just stay um, in present moment with the body or open the eyes or continue into this next part of the practice. Recalling now the times that I have felt hurt or harmed neglected or treated unkindly. Remember, you can just touch into this and then move away from it, touch and go. Remembering that this practice doesn't mean approving of harmful actions. It's a practice to free our own heart mind. So as we allow a gentle feeling into this and into the intention to forgive, to let go, as much as I am ready and able to forgive, as much as I am ready and able to forgive, I offer forgiveness to those who have caused me harm so I can be free, so I can heal. As much as I am ready and able to forgive, I offer forgiveness to those who have caused me harm so I can be free, so I can heal. I offer forgiveness. I forgive you. Or I intend to forgive you. Could be someday, 
could be a little bit. You notice if you're holding your breath or contractions, tensions. You can move out of the practice anytime. And lastly, if there is a situation I am not yet ready to forgive, I forgive myself for that. If there is a situation I'm not yet ready to forgive, I forgive myself for that. And I continue to cultivate the intention to forgive someday. And releasing that with a deeper breath, feeling the ground of the present moment. Free, slow moving, wondrous things by Rosemary Watola Drummer. The heart of the blue whale is in no hurry, only four to eight beats per minute. And the glaciers move their brilliant blue mass less than 300 meters a year. And forgiveness, it can move even slower than that. It may be months, even years before it blooms. But how wondrous when at last we recognize that perhaps through no effort of our own, it has released its unhurried perfume into our thoughts. Oh, sweetness we thought might never arrive. Oh, surprise when it touches us everywhere. am forgiven. I 
I forgive myself. I offer forgiveness. Taking a deeper breath, really gently releasing the practice, feeling the ground, the breath as you gently open your eyes or slow movements. And if you're resting and want to keep resting, that's perfectly good and well. Please feel free to do that. Um, in the YouTube recording, I'll put a link to the poem and uh, I might put a version of some forgiveness phrases in down below as well so that you have them. Yeah, so um, thank you for venturing into that tender territory. And please uh, recall, as Gina Sharp reminds us, that um, it's a practice that accumulates over time. We will receive the most benefit from it if we are, have, bring some consistency to it. Keep revisiting it if you feel there's uh, walled off places or stuck places within the heart. Better to just do little bits more frequently. Okay. Thank you for being here. <laughs>